good part of mustache here. So here is my week-long expedition sum up. So, the one week sum up from my week-long expedition aboard the Falcon in preparation for Flight of the Falcon. You guys have heard me say Flight of the Falcon a couple times, but I don't think you understand what exactly it is and what's going on and some of the things I learned for the week. So, here is a brief rundown as to some of the things that I've learned. So... One of the things that I've outfitted the Falcon with is a uh, cellular hotspot and uh, a new phone uh, so that I can have internet connections and things like that. The phone, everything that you've seen on the video blogs has been shot, edited, and uploaded through the phone. Now, those of you who've been sticking with me the entire journey, thank you very much. Those of you who just joined the journey, don't forget to push subscribe and the bell notification so you see when new, noti new notifications come through as to posting of the blog. It is something that I plan to do every day, or try to do every day, as we learned in day two. So what happened was is I learned some of the limitations about utilizing that technology. Nothing wrong with shooting. Nothing wrong with editing. Thank you, The Dude Without Fear. If you're interested, check out The Dude Without Fear's channel. But The Dude Without Fear is the one that turned me on to the editing software, which works like a charm. Thank you. Ah, uh, but one of the things that I learned is, um, especially utilizing the cellular connections the way I was, and what I was shooting that I was continuing to put out videos at 1080p high resolution and day two was actually a half long hour video and it was too much it took way too long one of the things that I learned about this is while editing and while uploading I've completely lost the use of the phone uh, you can't do anything else on the phone when your video is rendering. And while it's uploading to YouTube, I don't utilize the app. I use the phone browser. And it uh, can bog down and takes ridiculous amounts of time. In fact, I made four attempts to try to upload the video. And it was taking so long that it was just impractical. Hence the video blogs being down around the five minute mark. Maybe ten minutes if I wanted to push it. But that's one of the limitations that I learned. So, big videos and in-depth videos are going to be handled a little bit differently. But I will still be doing the blogs with the phone. Okay, that was one of the things I've learned. I made a list in my handy dandy notebook here of things that... Uh, the week-long expedition uh, taught me, number one, I purposefully only existed on power generation of the Falcon itself, which meant that I did not have a heater, So, uh, which was intentional. It was intentional. Uh, I do plan to carry a propane-powered heater on board, but that consumes propane fuel, and it was something that I wanted to see how much endurance I could actually have and still be relatively comfortable, and for the most part, I was. I only included a couple things uh, to combat that. One was a um, 
like a fleece bathrobe or a snuggie when I'm sitting in the cabin, um, especially at night when the temperature starts to drop. I don't always want to be wearing a coat because uh, that was a little too much. But you may want something. And I didn't want to use a blanket because that's big and floppy. I wanted something on me because it's easier to move around the cabin with. Uh, especially since, like, my kitchen is right next to the companionway, and you don't want that closed while you're cooking, so cold breeze, so got that. Um, and a second comforter for the bed area uh, would prevent that uh, early morning chill. It also might make it difficult to get out of bed because you're so warm and snuggy. But uh, a second blanket wouldn't hurt anything and would just make the comfort more. Um, one of the unique pieces of equipment that I decided to try to get for the Flight of the Falcon that I noticed, especially in the early morning, when you have a lot of condensation uh, from the night before, is uh, I want one of those window squeegees uh, on a handle because... Uh, I found that the solar panels produced a little more energy if there wasn't puddles of water on the glass and waiting for it to evaporate. Uh, I can get a half hour or more of uh, production of energy if I squeegee those off in the morning. So a, a window squeegee was a piece of equipment that I decided to pick up. Uh, and then just odds and ends, uh, different types of uh, hooks uh, to put on the wall to hang uh, coffee cups and things like that on um, a set of bowls because the Falcon didn't have any bowls on it. Um, I also made notes about the provisioning certain kinds of foods uh, that would have enhanced the meals that I had uh, that I of often found craving. Uh, mainly things like crackers and something to munch on during the day when I was having sandwiches. Um, I didn't bring any chips or anything when I provisioned. The store I chose to go to was a bad idea uh, because it was so expensive. It turns out there was an Aldi's not much further away. So, But I didn't. I chose the closest store. So one of the lessons learned was to take a a broader look around, not just aim for the closest, but aim for the things that fulfill your needs the most. Uh, overall, everything functioned absolutely perfectly. So, let's talk a little bit about the Flight of the Falcon. The Flight of the Falcon is an idea uh, for me to take advantage of uh, this pandemic that's going on and some of the things that it's done, I'm actually going to use it for my benefit. Uh, in order to ship the Falcon, uh, it would cost around $12,000 to have it brought here. Um, it would cost me more than that to have somebody sail it here. Given the Falcon's location and my current location, uh, I am on a branch of the Ten Tom Waterway. So I can, at least in theory, and a lot of people do this, bring the Falcon down the Potomac into the Chesapeake Bay, out the Chesapeake Bay, around Virginia, um, actually Virginia Beach, connect with the Intercoastal Waterway, which is a protected waterway that runs the entire length of the East Coast, down the East Coast, about halfway through Florida, uh, and you cut across where Lake Okeechobee is, and you come out at like Fort Myers on the other side. You connect with the Gulf Coast Waterway, take it up and around um, the Gulf Coast, to Mobile, Alabama, which is the exit of the Ten Tom Waterway. And then from there, it's just a trip north up the Ten Tom till I get to the tributary and, and come home. 
and actually bring the boat here. Uh, I can't take massive amounts of time off of work. Uh, you really can't leapfrog it because the driving distance from where my current location is to uh, where the Falcon is is the exact same driving distance that Mobile, Alabama is. So you, I've got to com almost completely complete the journey just to hit the break-even point. doesn't work. Uh, so that is the flight of the Falcon. That is the journey that I intend to document. It is a massive undertaking. Bringing the Falcon here doesn't necessarily save me anything, but let me, uh, let me explain to you what has happened. So I have owned the Falcon for about two years, and I've had this dream for longer than that, but I've had the Falcon for two years not a lot of progress has been made in that two years because a single season, not a year, a single season's worth of dock fees is more than I paid for the boat. So it takes everything. And it's an eight-hour drive to get there. So in order to do any kind of meaningful work, um... I need to take time off of work just to be down there. If I go for a weekend, I cut out of here on a Friday. I'll get there Saturday morning. You're not going to do much if you've been driving all night. Maybe uh, get some stuff done Saturday night, Sunday. You leave Sunday night, you get home Monday morning. That doesn't work. And if you do it on a four-day... That's fine. Friday and Monday are your travel days. Uh, so you have Saturday and a Sunday. You have two days out of four. Um, so you don't get a lot of work done. Uh, and work often stalls because uh, missing a piece or, or something along those lines. Getting the Falcon up here where I am means I can literally be there in 15 minutes. And... Uh, get a lot more work done on it and, and do a lot more things with it. So that's why this is extremely important to me. It's also a heck of an adventure. I'm not a sponsored channel. I'm a very small channel. I don't have a, a Patreon account people are pouring money into. I'm doing this all myself. Uh, nobody's given me anything. Uh, it, it's all me, it's, hence the patchwork. Uh, so that's that's what the plan is, is to bring the Falcon here. I learned a lot over the week about my provisioning and um, just kind of adjusting to that liveaboard lifestyle. I literally went a couple days without stepping off the boat, and that was intentional because if I'm at anchor somewhere, I can't just hop off the boat. Um, I did do... I have gotten and performed a test on an inflatable uh, kayak, which will serve as my temporary dinghy for this journey. Um, and I have that video. I just have to edit it and put it up. So you guys will see that video as well. Learn a little bit more about that. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my first subscriber, Mark, uh, because he's the one that has given me the list of questions that I wrote down uh, so that uh, I, I kind of have a an idea of what people are, are, are looking for and everything uh, I'll do an in-depth uh, filming of the provisioning uh, one thing I did find is that although it cost me a tremendous amount because of the store I chose to be at. I had uh, more than enough food for the week. I did not purchase any any additional foods. That one trip to the store uh, got me through the week. Um, and uh, the power needs were more than met. Uh, so all my criteria have been met for this journey uh, if there's 
things that you would like to see uh, or know about what's going on, leave them in the comments. And as always, continue to wish me luck. Hey, thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe, hit the bell notification if you want to know of new content, and may the winds always be at your back.